do you want to share with our group um, what it is that prompted you, first of all, to get started on the road? Why did you want to do that? Uh, we always told the kids when they were small that we were going to um, sell the house, get an RV, and travel. So that was our intent. So our kids never thought we were crazy. You know, a lot of your families, you know, find out you're going to go nomadic and they go, are you nuts? Are you going to be safe? Uh, you know, all these things that come into their head. And um, we started out um, in 2017. We got the RV in 2000. Well, it was 9-11-14 when we got the RV. But we spent a year and a half fixing it up. Um, we had a 1977 American Clipper, and their kitchens are at the end. Well, where the fan is that takes uh, um, you know, exhaust out from your cooking, um, broke on it, and they just put a bucket over it. Well, in Washington, it rained. Well, it leaked in, so the whole, the whole um, uh, kitchen area and the bathroom was right next door, so all that ceiling had to be redone. So we spent a year and a half getting it ready. So it was um, May of 2017. Um, we hit the road. We started out in Washington first. Um, we lived on the west coast of Washington, and we didn't really know east coast of Washington. So we just sort of started going over there. Um, we had family that lived over there in the Tri-Cities and Spokane. So we just kind of made our way over there and played as we go, staying at state parks and just enjoying Washington to see what Washington was like before we mm -hmm. decided we're going to Arizona. So. so that was kind of a plan in your head all along. You and Homer had this idea. You wanted to do this and you just made it clear to the family early on you're going to do this and you did it. Years ago, so what year did you start the traveling? 2017, May of 2017. So you've been on the road for six years? Yes. Wow. Congratulations. Really, I mean that. I think <laughs> that, takes a, that, that takes a lot of courage, truthfully. And as we get through this video, mm -hmm. people will hear exactly why that is. All right, so you start out. Um, and I'm assuming, did you either, uh, so you left your home, either you sold what you had or you, did you put it in storage? What what did you do with all of your belongings? That A you lot didn't of bring it we you? put in storage. No, we didn't bring everything with us. Um, yeah. Um, I, I spent a year and a half researching um, what we needed to have in the RV and that. So um, mm -hmm. I did all that. Homer is still working at that time in 2014 when we got it. He was still working at the hospital in housekeeping. And it was July of 2015. I think he retired 15 or 16. I don't remember. I know July 31st was his last day at work. And he did uh -huh. 30 years at the hospital there and ever. So, wow. Um, we, we still had um, some time to um, decide when we're going to do it. Then um, at that time, uh, we didn't own anything. We were renting a, um, a duplex, and mm -hmm. he decided to turn it over to property management, plus that meant the rent was going to go up. This is all, all before, you know, uh, the virus and everything. So everything sure. was going to go up, and it's like, we can't do this. We still had our youngest living at home with us so we just started clean i'm a pack rat i admit it my kids call me a hoarder i call myself a pack rat so i had 40 42 43 years of garbage to get rid of so sure. a lot of it we gave away so some of it we sold um a lot of it went into storage um we ended up having um one big Storage. Then we moved to another one that had two storages. So every summer we'd go back to Washington and work on the storage unit to downsize it some more and some more. So uh, two years ago we got it down and and ended up that 
what we have left, we um, which were pitchers, 45 years of pitchers. Um, uh, I can't tell you everything we had. We still have all these pitchers. We had some of the kids and stuff that we had to ship to them. All that went to Homer's Cousins Ranch. And so mm -hmm. that's where it sits now. Um, we have we still have stuff there, and my youngest job was to um, scan all those pictures. So we either um, either you're going to take it, or I'm going to burn it all, and it's going to be on a disc or a floppy disk or flash drive. I don't know what. So sure. that was the plan, but then everything happened last summer that we didn't get back to Washington. So the route you took. Did you just, you just went, so you wanted to see Eastern Washington, beautiful area, I'm sure. Um, and so from there, did you have a plan? And it, it was more or less that um, I dealt with depression. So it's like I have all this stuff in a two-car garage, and my, mm -hmm. one of my sons lived out in the garage. So uh -huh. where do I start? Do I start here? Do I start over there? Do I start in the house? Where? So you, it got to the point where we just couldn't afford to live there. So mm -hmm. our son moved out. Um, and so we just started, you know, getting rid of stuff, um, decided, getting the storage unit, deciding what we were going to keep, um, what we were going to deal with later. No, I don't want to deal with this. Yes, we're getting rid of, you know, the couch, the bed, you know, everything mm -hmm. else, the big stuff you start getting rid of first. And then you work on the other stuff as the years, you know, as you keep coming back, you work on the next, you know, pile of stuff. You just, you're in a storage unit, so you're working, you know, from box to box to figure out what you're going to keep and what you're going to, you know, who are you going to give this kid to, um, you know, stuff like that. So it's just, you know, brain-wise, spending three months three or four months in Washington before you have to get out of there before the weather changes. Sure. Oh, especially in eastern Washington where, the, you know, the snow uh, falls. <laughs> so did you have a plan for... Yeah. Did you have a plan for once you saw eastern Washington? Did you think, oh, we're, we're heading, now we're going to go to Montana, Idaho, we're going to... Arizona, did you have an end plan or just you're going to wander around for a little bit? The plan was we were always going to go to Arizona. So we ended up going to um, Lake Havasu first and start there. Because we were planning to be there for the van built in November. So Homer, you know, wanted to get there right now. Well, October is a bad time to go to have a zoo because it's 90 degrees there. So you're still dealing with heat. So by after Halloween, that's when the temperature dropped. And that's when we were going to be there for the van bill. Then we were going to go down to court side for the RTR. So and then, so you know, when you go to the van bill, that's when you start meeting people and figuring out, okay, these are the people I want to travel with. And so that's when, you know, we started meeting YouTubers. So. Sure. So you already knew you were headed down to to the RTR. Kind of that was the end goal for the, for the immediate time being. So our first... Our first our first plan was to do the van bill because we knew of that. That was the second year that um, Jimmy Diamonds was going to do that. I mean, that was a <laughs> fun year, too. So that's when wow. we got um, our solar. That year, we got our solar. Mm -hmm. And then you're meeting, uh, you're meeting YouTubers, plus you're finding your tribe then. So sure. you kind of feel out people to figure out who you want to travel with, who you don't want to travel with, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it's just sort of your first year of learning it. Sure. Then that's when we went next. Our next stop would go down to courtside for um, RTR. So we just sort of bounced around with whoever right. you're traveling with at the time. So, so as you're bouncing around and things, you know, uh, things, things are moving along and, and, you know, you're going places, doing things. 
um, is what kind of issues, and one of the things that, you know, the main thing of this part of our, our uh, video is about, is that going to be focusing on issues on the road. So as time goes along, did you start, did you have any issues with your RV? I mean, how, how often have you had to deal with that in the last six years? Breakdown, you mean? Um, yeah, breakdown. First we I mean, had, first things we had were tires, blowing, blowing tires. If you don't keep your tires inflated, they will pop on you. So we've done dealt with that at the beginning. Um, uh, we were in California, we blew a tire. We were on our way to Phoenix, we blew a tire. Um, so you just have to deal with that whether you're not going to be able to change your tire yourself. You're going to have to call tire service to come out. So that's what we dealt with first. How, can I ask you a question uh, about that? How did that work? Did ahead. you have? Um, do, did you have? Do you always keep a spare tire, or do you have to bring them? And and by yeah. the way, do you have? Um, if you have uh, like towing insurance or any kind of thing like that on your on your RV? At that that time, we didn't have a towing on it. The first tire okay. we blew was coming through California. No, back up. We were on our way to Phoenix with um, full tiny house and um, uh, pandemonium. All right. So the when you had the the tire blowout, you had somebody come out and and deal with it because you're right. It's not safe for most people to be changing their own RV tire. Correct? No, no. You the RV will fall on you. And, yes. and kill you. So that was the thing. Homer says, oh, I'll just change it myself. I'm bringing a jack. Okay, no, yeah. you're not. So the, so the first time we had a blowout, we were, um, a bunch of us were heading to Phoenix. Um, we were going to Cabela's. We were all meeting there. So mm -hmm. S&S &S and RV Cats and us, we travel slower. So we left earlier than Full Tiny House, um, Pandemonium, um, destination, um, open, uh, destination Open Road, um, Terry and Scott. So we were traveling with them at the time. So we left early because we knew we would be slower. And because um, we had a class C and s, &S has a fifth wheel and three caps that they travel with. So mm -hmm. we took off. We were ahead. s, &S was behind us probably two, three miles behind us. So um, uh, her, hus her husband, Sal, Homer was driving. So um, Sharon and I were texting each other. We got 50 feet from the first rest stop heading up, and that's when we blew the tire. So I'm texting Sharon, and all of a sudden, I deleted out and said, blew a tire going into the rest stop. So she said, she said, okay, we're behind you. We'll catch up with you. So they pulled out as we go in there. Then that's what I start, you know, um, uh, Googling uh, tire place. So we had a tire place from Salome to come out and um, fix our tire. We, yes, we had a spare tire. So we didn't have to buy a tire that time. So um, that's when we learn you have to keep your check your tires. Make sure they're at the level you want them because when they go down, that's when you blow a tire. And that's right. what happened. So at that point, it was an inside tire on the dually. So we were able to drive off the road and wait for them. So SNS came in behind us, waited for us. Then I started texting um, Full Tiny House saying, we blew a tire. You want us to stop? No, go. We'll catch up. So, yeah. and it was a matter of 45 minutes that tire guy was there. So, for, well, okay. We had, um, was it Sam? No, it wasn't AAA. I think it was Sam's tire. Um, they said that we could have somebody there in three hours. No, I wasn't waiting for that. Um, so, that's when I found my own tire person to come. And he was there in 45 minutes. 
the other place was going to charge us over three hundred dollars to change our tire. Um, we did this for um, I think under sixty dollars. He came wow. out, changed the tire, checked all the tires. I asked him, please check all the tires. He did all that. He checked all the tires. In fact, the dualies were off, so you couldn't read the second one in. So he took the tire off, turned it so that you could read the tires to check, you know, what, you know, air pressure they were at. He did all that for under $60, if I remember right. Wow. So, and we were back on the road, kept up with everybody at Cabela's. So... It that pays was the to first do tire blow. It pays to do some checking around, apparently. Yes. 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 So, so, so you had you had that first tire blowout, and so it wasn't a big deal as far as financial. Um, but so, no. so many people are not prepared or don't really have a fund to fall back on in case of even something like a tire blowout. So, what do you recommend mm -hmm. doing? Either have AAA on your insurance or mm -hmm. Sam's Club. Yeah. So have that. Um, the next blowout we had, we were heading back to Washington. We were going through Utah, and um, we just got out of um, Nephi, Utah, blew a tire. I called mm -hmm. um, Sam, found out it expired, so, um, or did we? I don't remember. Anyway, so um, at one point we found out it was expired, so they couldn't help us. But anyway, so um, they ended up finding a, a person for us. So they came out, looked at us. We had to buy two new tires, I think, at that time. Um, so we were taken back to the tire guy's house after he changed the tire. Um, he looked at all the tires and and seeing that they were kind of weathered because we spent that year and a half just getting ready to get on the road. So sure. um, you need to check your tires to make sure you don't have the splits on the side of them. Right. Stuff like that. So um, that's mainly what you have to do. Um, but that's mainly just the tires that we had to deal with at the beginning. Mm -hmm. so well, that's a good... You want to go to the... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. So, so you want to tell the next event. Let's, let's call it the next event. Okay. So we were with um, uh, the caravan that Bob had, and that was yeah. Randy, um, the mobile traveler. We had finished. We were at the last place there in Pomosa Road. Um, so uh, s, s was heading to um, um, uh, Blue water casino and we were going to meet up with them well why we were with the caravan we needed to do the break well um cherokee did the passenger side homer did the driver's side so mm -hmm. the brakes got done the tires got put on sns took off we took off headed up 95 up to parker to meet up with them we got seven miles from pomosa road the driver's side first tire dropped in the middle of the highway. The second one came off, went across the street, down the side of the street, and crossed in front of us. And Homer had to take that tire and, or that RV and get it to the side of the road and get it off the road. And when he did, um, he was white knuckling. And